the mistress of King Edward VII, Daisy Greville, the bold socialite. Daisy Greville was an active participant in the Marlborough House set of Prince Albert Edward, and despite its seemingly conservative facade, the club was anything but prim. It served as a notorious hub for extramarital affairs, with Daisy often at its epicentre. While cards were also part of the entertainment, the primary focus was on indulging in unrestrained adultery. Join us as we delve into the scandalous tale of Daisy Greville, one of history's most audacious socialites. Frances Evelyn Maynard, later known as Daisy Greville, was born on the 10th of December 1861 in London's Berkeley Square. Her father, Colonel Charles Maynard, and mother Blanche Fitzroy, who hailed from a royal lineage, marked an unconventional pair due to their significant age gap. At Daisy's birth, her father was 50 years old, while her mother was merely 18, setting the stage for a life coloured by intrigue and scandal. As the elder of two daughters, Daisy and her sibling, nicknamed Blanche after her mother, were fortunate in terms of their financial future. Their father stood as the heir apparent to Henry Maynard, third Viscount Maynard ensuring a substantial inheritance. However, fate took an unexpected turn with Daisy's father, failing to outlive the Viscount. Despite the tragedy, Daisy found herself the sole beneficiary, inheriting the prestigious Eton Lodge in Little Eton, Essex. With her father's passing at the tender age of four, Daisy's mother wasted no time in remarrying. Blanche Fitzroy's union with Lord Rosalind, a prominent figure in royal circles, swiftly followed, resulting in five half-siblings for Daisy. Despite the loss of her father, Daisy's newfound wealth and familial ties eased her transition into a new chapter of life. With her mother's remarriage and her own maturation, Daisy soon found herself thrust into the world of courtship. Despite being considered a highly desirable match, Daisy encountered a setback when introduced to Queen Victoria's youngest son, Prince Leopold. His haemophilia posed a significant obstacle in their union, dampening the prospects of a future together. Daisy harboured reservations about marrying Prince Leopold, perhaps due to his delicate health. Fortunately, an ideal suitor was closer than she imagined. Francis Greville, Leopold's aide and son of an earl, stood readily available. Though it took some persuasion, Daisy eventually secured her parents' approval, and in 1881, she and Greville reunited in matrimony. On the 30th of April 1881, Daisy exchanged vows with Francis Greville in a grand ceremony held at Westminster Abbey. The event was attended by esteemed members of the royal family, including the Prince and Princess of Wales, who bestowed their blessing upon the newlyweds. Little did Daisy know then, the Prince's presence would soon exert a significant, albeit at times, tumultuous influence on her life. Following the extravagant wedding festivities, Daisy and Francis Greville plunged into high society, hosting lavish parties that garnered considerable attention. However, amidst the glamour, lurked a darker reality, as both spouses engaged in extramarital affairs, succumbing to the temptations of youth and recklessness, setting the stage for turmoil ahead. Amidst Daisy's whirlwind of social engagements, a cycling frenzy swept across Britain, known as cyclomania. Daisy, an early enthusiast, embraced the trend wholeheartedly, yet her passion for cycling would soon entangle her in controversy and scandal. As Daisy and Prince Albert Edward, also known as Edward VII, shared a mutual love for cycling and the fact that he had attended Daisy's wedding, rumours began to circulate, insinuating a more intimate relationship between them. Fueled by gossip, the press spun tales of romantic entanglements, prompting a musician to compose a suggestive song about Daisy, further solidifying her status as a topic of fervent discussion. Henry Dacre capitalised on the cycling craze with the song Daisy Bell, a playful take on Daisy Greville's exploits, though the identity of the song's narrator remains ambiguous. Speculation swelled, with many suggesting it alluded to Prince Albert Edward. Such conjecture, 
only served to amplify Daisy's prominence as one of England's most intriguing figures. In 1893, Daisy's father-in-law passed away, signalling a pivotal moment for her and her husband. With his demise came the inheritance of an earldom, propelling them to esteemed Warwick Castle. Here, amidst the opulent surroundings, Daisy found herself at the zenith of society, surrounded by a new circle of affluent revellers, yet little did she know, peril lurked beneath the surface. Recognising Daisy's prowess as a hostess, she was swiftly embraced by the creme de la creme of society, the marble house set, led by none other than Prince Albert Edward, the very figure implicated in the infamous bicycle scandal. This elite enclave bestowed upon Daisy a, a coverted position. However, with acceptance came unspoken expectations. As a prominent member of the Marlborough House set, Daisy and her female counterparts were subject to a startling decree. They were expected to entertain extramarital liaisons at the behest of the male members. This rule, coupled with a strict prohibition of divorce, ensured the preservation of the set's clandestine affairs. Under the watchful eye of Prince Albert Edward, divorce was viewed as a cardinal sin, capable of inciting scandal and tarnishing the royal family's image. Consequently, any member who dared to seek separation faced expulsion for eternity, a fate deemed far worse than marital discontent. Immersed in the intrigue of the Marlborough House set, Daisy herself succumbed to the allure of forbidden romance, engaging in an illicit affair with Lord Charles Beresford. Despite her mutual transgressions, Daisy's outrage reached fever pitch upon learning of Beresford's wife's pregnancy, a glaring hypocrisy that prompted her to pen a damning letter. Intended solely for Lord Beresford's eyes, Daisy's letter condemning his actions inadvertently fell into the hands of his unsuspecting wife. The revelation of her husband's infidelity plunged Lady Charles into turmoil, shattering her world and exposing Daisy's role in her anguish. Faced with the repercussions of her impulsive act, Daisy turned to Prince Albert Edward, beseeching his aid in retrieving the incriminating letter. Moved by her distress and mindful of her favour, the prince reluctantly agreed to intervene, setting in motion a desperate bid to salvage Daisy's reputation and quell the scandal. The Prince of Wales successfully negotiated the return of Daisy Greville's incriminating letter from Lady Charles, but with a significant condition attached. Daisy must abstain from London for the entire social season. However, the spirited Daisy adamantly refused this demand, unwilling to sacrifice her penchant for revelry for the sake of a letter. Recognising Daisy's determination, the prince, rather than insisting on compliance, redirected his displeasure towards Lady Charles. With Daisy steadfastly refusing to forego the social season, the Prince of Wales issued a warning to both Lord Beresford and Lady Charles. He cautioned that any scandal sparked by Daisy's letter would spell ruin for their social standing. Shocked by the Prince's severity, Lord Beresford's emotions erupted, leading to a confrontation where he forcefully pushed the Prince into a nearby sofa, revealing the depth of his frustration and anger. In the course of resolving Daisy's predicament, romantic feelings blossomed between her and the Prince of Wales. As their affair intensified, the prince's friendship with Lord Beresford disintegrated, clouded by a mutual desire for Daisy. Daisy revelled in her newfound connection with the prince, signalling her affection through a grand gesture. Desiring more frequent encounters with the Prince of Wales, without arousing suspicion, Daisy devised a clever solution a private railway station constructed near her residence. This clandestine haven facilitated discreet rendezvous, shielding their affair from prying eyes. However, as their passion grew, Daisy's heedlessness invited looming consequences. As the affair between Daisy and the prince continued, secrecy became burdensome, prompting public appearances together. 
While Albert Edward's wife initially tolerated Daisy's discreet presence, her tolerance waned as their liaison became increasingly conspicuous. The escalating gossip surrounding Daisy's romantic entanglements tarnished her once pristine reputation. Another scandal rocked the Marlborough House set, this time involving accusations of cheating, not in matters of infidelity, but at the card table. The Prince of Wales' penchant for barricat, an illicit gambling game, culminated in an infamous dispute where Sir William Gordon Cumming faced allegations of foul play. Unsurprisingly, Daisy found herself embroiled in the ensuing controversy, her presence adding fuel to the already raging fire. Speculations ran rampant regarding the informant who exposed Sir Gordon Cummings' card cheating scandal, with Daisy Greville's penchant for gossip making her the prime suspect. As the scandal unfolded in court, the media bestowed upon Daisy a distinctive moniker, dubbing her the Babbling Brook, due to her marriage to Lord Brook. However, the depth of this scandal extended far beyond mere card games. Despite her ongoing liaison with the prince, Daisy's infidelity reached new heights when the prince unexpectedly discovered her in the arms of another man, none other than Sir Gordon Cumming. Daisy's betrayal extended not only to her husband, but also to her clandestine lover, revealing the complexities of her romantic entanglements and the consequences of her actions. The naming of Daisy's first child, Leopold, bore curious significance, given its shared name with her former suitor. Whether a deliberate affront or a peculiar coincidence, Daisy's unconventional tendencies reflected in her choice of names, adding another layer to her enigmatic persona. Following the birth of her daughter, Marjorie Blanche, Daisy disclosed a startling revelation. Francis Greville was not Marjorie's biological father. This revelation hinted at Daisy's clandestine affairs and the complexities of her romantic liaisons, shedding light on the true paternity of her children and unravelling long-held family secrets. In a 1923 confession, Daisy divulged that Lord Charles Beresford, a charismatic Navy man and politician, fathered her second child. Beresford's public persona and close association with Daisy underscored the intensity of their relationship, revealing yet another chapter in Daisy's complex romantic history. While entwined in a passionate affair with Prince Albert Edward, Daisy's romantic escapades took another turn with her involvement with the millionaire Joseph Laycock. Despite Laycock's casual approach to relationships, Daisy found herself drawn into a whirlwind romance, risking her heart in pursuit of fleeting excitement. As her entanglements multiplied, Daisy found herself navigating treacherous waters where love and desire collided with scandal and consequence. Amid Daisy's fervent affair with Laycock, he found himself entangled in a passionate liaison with Catherine Mary Hare, nicknamed Kitty. Kitty faced divorce proceedings initiated by her husband due to her involvement with Laycock, refusing to release him from the consequences of their affair. Ultimately, Laycock opted to marry Kitty, considering Daisy already had a husband. Despite this, Daisy's ardour for Laycock persisted, leaving the fate of their affair uncertain, or so it seemed. Laycock's decision to wed Kitty didn't signal a sudden commitment to monogamy, Daisy and Laycock continued their passionate liaison, unabated by marriage. Moreover, Laycock's marital status didn't deter him either from fathering yet another child of Daisy, adding to her brood of four living children. For those keeping score, one offspring from her husband, one from Beresford and two from Laycock. With each new addition to her unconventional family, Daisy's reputation garnered increasing scrutiny from critics. Robert Blatchford, a journalist and author, criticised Daisy's extravagant lifestyle in scathing prose. His critique targeted her astacious consumption, contrasting it with the poverty and suffering prevalent in society. Incensed by his words, Daisy stormed into his office, demanding an immediate apology. 
Instead of receiving an apology, Daisy found herself engaged in an unexpected exchange of ideas with the journalist. Embracing his socialist ideologies, Daisy engaged in numerous discussions with him, absorbing his teachings with avid interest. Using the knowledge gained, she lined with another journalist, and she embarked on campaigns for education, poverty alleviation and women's rights. Her advocacy extended to promoting women's access to education and employment opportunities. Yet, despite her altruistic pursuits, Daisy's lavish lifestyle depleted her finances, teetering her on the brink of financial ruin. Despite these hardships, Daisy's love for spending persisted, starkly contrasting her dedication to social change. Daisy Gravel's extravagant expenditures extended to the transformation of her eastern estate into the botanical marvel. Employing a renowned landscape architect, she orchestrated the creation of over 10 acres of picturesque parkland, featuring a sunken garden and a lily-adorned canal. Unsatisfied with the mere flora, Daisy ventured into the realm of fauna, establishing a vibrant avian collection alongside her ponies on her estate. Yet the best pit was Easton's Menagerie, which was undoubtedly a majestic white peacock. However, such opulence came at a steep price, straining Daisy's already dwindling finances. Relying on her inheritance from her grandfather and her intimate ties to the now King Edward VII of England, Daisy had maintained her extravagant lifestyle. However, with the king's tragic demise looming, her financial security was imperiled. While the king had been generous, his reign was finite, leaving Daisy in a precarious position. Following King Edward VII's passing, Daisy wielded a potent asset, intimate knowledge of his numerous extramarital liaisons. Armed with details of his indiscretions, Daisy possessed a formidable tool for leverage. Despite her moniker as the babbling brook, she held concrete evidence to substantiate her claims. Determined to capitalise on her knowledge, Daisy retained a cache of letters penned by the late king, wherein he detailed his illicit affairs. While King Edward had been discreet during his lifetime, the revelation of his infidelities promised scandal of unprecedented proportions, threatening to tarnish his posthumous legacy. Undeterred by legal barriers to selling the incriminating letters, Daisy sought to monetize her explosive revelation. Approaching the new King Edward's son, she warned of the damning implications of the letters for the monarchy's reputation. Despite swift intervention from royal officials, Daisy remained undeterred, exploring alternative avenues to sell her scandalous trove. Though thwarted in her attempts to peddle the letters with legal confines, Daisy's determination remained unyielding. Turning to the American media, she sought a buyer, driven by desperation to alleviate her mounting debts. Yet, as she treaded this treacherous path, the question lingered. How far would Daisy go in pursuit of financial solvency? As the spectre of public scandal loomed over the monarchy, a solution emerged from an unexpected quarter. Arthur de Cross, a wealthy British politician and industrialist, recognised Daisy Greville's financial plight and her desire for recompense. Sensing an opportunity, he proffered a substantial sum, equivalent to £80,000, a princely sum back then, which translates to nearly £8 million today in exchange for her letters. With her financial woes pressing, Daisy readily accepted his offer, hoping it would suffice to alleviate her debts, but uncertainty lingered, would this windfall prove adequate? Despite the influx of funds from the sale of her letters, Daisy found herself mired in lingering debt. Seizing upon an unconventional solution, she entertained the notion of penning a memoir. Aware of the potential scandalous revelations such a memoir might entail, interested parties negotiated with Daisy to ensure the manuscript to remain discreet. In exchange for absolving her financial burdens, Daisy agreed to submit her memoir for editing, permitting the exclusion of any objectionable content. Daisy's memoir, Life's Ebb and Flow, 
eventually emerged, Albert heavily sanitised to appease concerned parties. While some anticipated scandalous revelations, the memoir received scathing criticisms from an unexpected source, Daisy's own daughter, condemned it as vulgar muck. Despite familial reproach, the memoir continued, offering a poignant glimpse into Edwardian society. This newfound pursuit signalled a departure from Daisy's normal pursuit of romance and scandal. In her twilight years, Daisy found solace and purpose in writing, penning a diverse array of books spanning from social issues, historical narratives and her passion for gardening. While she was often depicted as part of a royal duo, the truth revealed a solitary rider. Daisy never remarried after her husband's passing, Although she did maintain her independence, it's conceivable that she still indulged in occasional companionship along life's journey. Daisy Gravel passed away from natural causes on the 26th of July 1938 at the age of 76, leaving behind a legacy that transcended scandal and romance and it was etched in the pages of literary endeavours. Daisy Greville, a woman whose relentless pursuit of beauty and financial solvency defied the norms of her time. From the lush landscapes of her eastern estate to the corridors of power, where royal favour was both coveted and precarious. Daisy's story focuses on the tensions between the extravagance and constraint. Yet amidst scandals and financial turmoil, Daisy's legacy endures not only in the verdant gardens she cultivated, but also in the resilience that she displayed, ultimately finding solace and purpose in the written word. Through her life's twists and turns, Daisy Greville leaves behind a tale of tenacity, passion and the enduring quest for redemption.